What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Two for one review today. Joytech Evic VTC Mini and the Watofo Serpent Mini. Two for one review. Check it out. Alrighty then, welcome back for another review. Like I said, we're going to be taking a look at the Joytech Evic VTC Mini, and we're also going to be taking a look at the Botofo Serpent Mini. Uh, before we get too far into this, I apologize for the lighting. Uh, it's weird outside right now. The sun doesn't know what it wants to do, and it's getting dark and light and dark. It's weird out there right now, so you're going to see that on the camera, I'm sure. Alright, so uh, everyone has seen one of the... Uh, VTC minis. I'm sure everyone and their mother has conducted a review on one of these somewhere, so we might as well get started right there. Um, I'm not going to get too in-depth with this because I'm sure everybody's seen it. It's a really solid little device. I got the all-black model, and it just fits great in the hand. Like I said before, I've got little girl hands, and I can cover this thing up. It takes a single 18650, great little battery cover there. I've got a LG Brown 3000 milliamp hour uh, battery in there. Um, solid, solid uh, battery. No rattle or anything at all. Nice spring-loaded uh, 510 uh, connector. Gorgeous OLED display. Uh, I've been rocking this in stainless steel 316 at 600 degrees and uh, 50 watts uh, with the particular setup that I've got. Good clicky uh, fire button and uh, up and down buttons. Right now they probably aren't going to do anything because I've got key lock on. I'm not going to dig into a whole lot of the uh, menu features and whatnot on here just because, like I said, there are a billion of these reviews out there. I do have this upgraded to the latest firmware version that does support this, uh, let me pull it up here, this new mode that Joytech says is supposed to be like their end-all, be-all, whatever, for stainless steel. I haven't had a whole lot of luck with it. It just seems inconsistent in the way that it fires. But you know what? They want to put it on there, they put it on there. I think maybe it's made to work with their Cubist tank. Uh, but in theory, it should work with any 316 coils. Uh, that being said, I haven't had a whole lot of luck, and I just leave it right there in stainless steel 316 mode. Um, <clears throat> something I've noticed with the latest firmware uh, revision uh, for this device is that it seems like they've kind of fixed their uh, stainless steel 316. In previous firmware reversions, uh, revisions rather, I've had to actually utilize the TCR modes and manually enter my 316 settings. Otherwise, I'd just go right into temp control and then I'd get an anemic vape, as it is right now. Works beautifully. Um, not a whole lot to it. I mean, I, I like that it's got the front uh, micro USB for data and for charging. And, I mean, to be honest with you, that's the way I've been charging it. Battery door comes off easily. Um, you've got the little notch at the bottom. You might not be able to, there you go. Right there, you can just get your fingernail out and Pull, uh, pull the whole door out. Me, I just grab it on the sides and it comes out easy enough. It's not going to come out inadvertently. Uh, the battery tray is nice and clearly labeled positive and negative. Um, you know, like any device of this sort, battery safety is paramount. You don't want this thing blowing up in your face, but if you happen to be so ignorant that you put a battery in the wrong way, it's got reverse battery protection, so you don't have to worry about that. Really, really dig this thing. I've had mine for a while. I picked up the original uh, VTC Mini, and that was only available in those three colors right there. Um, they're all identical, though. I mean, the new ones are available in different colors, but you get the same features. They just come with a new firmware version pre-installed. Inside the box, you got the standard Joytech little foamy tray there. That's where your little guy was sitting. You got the hidden door, USB charging cable. Pretty nice one, too. I mean, it's good and heavy, great stuff. Uh, your warranty card. Scratch and sniff on the back of that. And then a, actually, fairly comprehensive user's manual. Um, what I like is that they've included some colored pictures on there, and they go into the menu screen really in-depth. Now, it comes in, like, 83 languages or something, so, I mean, it's pretty sizable. You know, find your language of choice, use it, rock it out, do what you gotta do. It is a Joytech product and their build quality does tend to be pretty good. 
One issue that I've noticed with this, and it's all across Joytech, Wismac, E-Leaf products, anything that falls under the Joytech iSmoka umbrella, that 510 pin seems to have a little bit of a short throw on it. So uh, tanks that have, or atomizers rather, that have a longer protruding 510 pin might not sit absolutely flush. Some do, some don't. So it's kind of a crapshoot with that. Uh, whatever else the case is, though, it's a rock-solid 75-watt device that just does what it's supposed to do. And I much prefer this vertical screen to something like, say, the uh, e -Leaf Stick Pico. I'm probably going to pick one of those up anyway because that device measures only about that tall and uh, might be better for a stealthier vape. But this device is actually smaller in this dimension. The Pico is about that wide just to make room for all the guts of what's in here. They have to slide it over a little bit to make room for the battery. It's effectively the same chip with a different uh, screen. But, I mean, I just love that screen. I like a vertical screen so I can just look at it regardless of what hand I'm looking at it with. I don't have to worry about the orientation if I am pulling it this way then have to rotate my hand. You know, it just works. Anyway, enough about that. Simple guy. You've seen it before. The thing just works great. Let's move on to this little fella. I got this, um, I guess about two weeks ago now, something, somewhere around there. And I'm digging it. Um, just to make the long story short here, this has become my go-to tank and it's replaced everything else that everything else that I've used other than for a you know portable setup. This is my at-home, more cloud chucking type of setup. So what is it? <clears throat> uh, it is a three mil uh, single coil RTA with a great build deck. Um, let's start with the box. You got this whole denim thing going on here. You got your scratch and sniff. You got a little bit of information on the back. And you've got your barcode. Um, this has your standard little guys at the bottom, 18 plus, blah, 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 nicotine warning, whatnot. The bottom and the top, you get that. And I think this is going to be available in black because it's got the stainless steel sticker on there. Once it is available in black, I'll probably pick one up to be perfectly honest with you. Open up the box, and it's standard drawer slide-out box. And you get your tray where the atomizer was. This is the drip tip that comes with it. Not big on metal drip tips anymore, but I mean, as far as they go, this thing's pretty nice. It's got the hollow cutout around the side. I just didn't much care for it, and I replaced it with uh, one of my own. Got your spare glass. This whole foamy assembly pops out, and it's... Uh, it's in there really, really tight. And <clears throat> inside, you get several things. You get your Wotofo t-shirt giveaway card. Really, really nice user's guide. Full color, yada, yada, yada. Tells you how to use the deck. Does not come with that multi-tool. I wish it really did. Um, and then you get three bags of stuffage. One of these bags contains a bunch of spare O-rings, and I'll see if I can get that on camera for you without spilling them. Tons of O-rings, red, clear, uh, blue, I've and black. I replaced mine with the black ones. You get another coil, or another bag that came with some cotton that I've already used. Decent enough stuff. I mean, it's like most of any other type of organic cotton. And then you've got a bag that I haven't opened yet that comes with a couple of uh, twisted coils. Uh, just some standard, I think, 26 gauge twisted. And uh, I've seen it on uh, other reviews and it works fine. Just not my speed. Uh, not really beefy enough for my taste. And that is all that's in the box. So, what do we got here? We got this. Again, that's not the stock drip tip. Uh, standard 510 drip tip, though. Pops out nice and easily. It's got a nice, dirty, juicy catch cup there. It is top filled. Top just on screws. Pops right back. And I'm probably flooding out the tank as I'm doing this, but yeah, whatever. A little Cylon style airflow control on both sides. What you do on one side happens on the other. 
it does stop, it doesn't keep spinning. That I like that. Um, 510 pin protrudes a little. I wouldn't use this on a mech mod ever, and uh, I probably would definitely not ever use this on a uh, hybrid just because that thing just barely sticks out there. Nice gaping uh, air holes there. You, you get a lot of airflow. One of the things that's really nice about this, for a, such, especially such a small tank, is that it does allow you to remove the base and access your deck without having to dump your juice. So, and to do that, simple enough, you know, turn it over, let that juice all flow down there. And my tank's fairly full, so I gotta kind of work with that. And close off that airflow. And unscrew the deck. That's it. And I'm trying to be careful because of all the wicking that I've got in this. I really don't want to mess it up too bad. So you're left with this. And you got a nice big chimney there. It does break down for cleaning, but I mean, obviously I can't do that right now. And now you guys get to see my really nasty looking coil setup. Um, I've got a vertical Clapton in here. I do need to change that wick, but I vape on tobaccos, uh, naturally extracted tobaccos primarily. And anyone who does that will tell you that when your coil looks like that, it actually tastes pretty good. Uh, it's not like any other type of e-juice. Tobaccos just, for whatever reason, work that way. I've got a single uh, 316 stainless Clapton in there with a 26 core and a 32 wrap. Comes out to about 0.35-ish ohms. Uh, really, really just rocks in this thing. Now, if you take a look at this, the top and the bottom, how they're kind of offset where the uh, wires are, or the leads, that's how this deck works. It's really made for a horizontal build. If you've got your wires facing in opposite directions, you drop them in there, you tighten it down, that's it. Then you lift your coil up off the deck so you don't get a short, and that's really all you need to do. For a vertical, do the same thing. Get your poster or screwdriver or whatever in there and rotate it so that it's leveled out uh, over the uh, airflow hole, which you can kind of just make out in there. I mean, you can see straight down to the bottom of the uh, air chamber. And once you've done that, you're good. It's set up. Get her wicked appropriately. Um, and we'll address that real quick. Um, I've got my wicks going all the way to the base. You can kind of see the lead, uh, the two-level ledge on this side where that wick is. You know, they recommend, a uh, Wotofo rather, recommends that you uh, have it just kind of draping over that first ledge. I have found that if I do that, I actually get flooding. Um, especially, especially when I'm filling the tank. So, what I've been doing is just been draping the wick all the way down to the base so that it's just barely touching the bottom of the base and I found that in doing that I don't get a whole lot of flooding except when I take the tank apart and uh, fill it and don't invert. That is um, one area of contention I've got with this thing. It does not have juice flow control so as you're filling it you gotta pop it open bleh, and fill it up start screwing this down and once you feel the top just start to uh, bite with the uh, silicone ring you gotta invert it, let the air bubble rise, and finish. You do that and it kind of mitigates some of that uh, flooding. Now right now I've probably flooded the hell out of this thing from poking around with it and opening it up two or three times without really doing anything. Um, so let's see what this thing vapes like. Now, like I said before, the VTC Mini has that weird 510 pin, but on this particular tank it sits flush. Um, I don't know why that is, but you put something like a sub-tank mini on this and you're going to have a gap. You can slide a piece of paper under there easily and you can definitely see through it if you look through. So what do we got here? Stainless steel 316 temp control mode, 50 watts and 600 degrees because that's how I roll. And let's see what kind of a gurgly flooded vape I get right now after fooling around with this thing. Not too bad actually, it's not flooded up really at all. I can feel some of that juice that's caught in that uh, catch cup underneath the 510 kind of spitting around, but it's really not that bad. Like I said, when I didn't follow the directions that's on here and followed some advice that I saw online 
and uh, just have those wicks going all the way to the base, just barely, barely touching that bottom level, it works like a champ. What you need to do though is make sure that that wick does fill the entire uh, circular part of the uh, juice flow hole. And don't be anemic with the, uh, the wicking, otherwise you'll flood this thing out in a cold minute because it's so small. Um, but this thing, I mean, it really produces outstanding flavor. It's such a small tank. It's uh, oh, measurements from top to bottom. Excluding the drip tip and the 510 pin, it is 30 millimeters. It is the same height as like the Pico RTA and uh, roughly the same height as the uh, Goblin 2 Mini. I much prefer this over the Goblin Mini V2, rather. Simply because I'm a single coil kind of guy. If a single coil will do, why not? I find that I get a little bit better airflow and I definitely get better vapor out of a single coil. And this thing just really does chuck some vapor. You're not going to win a cloud chasing competition, but you can put out a more than respectable amount of vapor with this. And uh, airflow. Um, definitely more airflow than, say, a sub tank mini or top tank mini. I mean, both of those are identical. Uh, but you're not going to get, you know, Griffin 25 type of airflow out of this. I mean, you're not going to be able to snorkel through this thing. But it's much, much, much more than adequate airflow. It just really works. Um, you got that little teeny tiny chimney, and this thing really does drink some juice, though. That, that is one of the caveats to this, because you don't get flavor or vapor, or both, as this thing does put out, without chewing up some juice. That's just part and parcel of it. Yeah, this thing just really works. I'm loving this tank. Like I said, it's become my go-to. Um, my top tank mini hasn't been used since. I've cleaned it out and it's sitting in a box. Um, slightly restrictive um, direct lung hit and a if you close it off all the way, like a hundred percent closed off airflow, you can still get some air going through it. And it does produce a pretty good mouth along experience. Uh, that being said, that's not what this is made for though. Um, not a bad idea to close that off and pull some air through it when you first install a wick into the system or into the tank though. You know, get the thing uh, primed. Now I've got this set up with a stainless steel coil and the beauty of that is if I feel like it I can just go into power mode. I've got it set for 30.5 watts because I had a different tank on there, but works fine. Not really my thing though. Even at 30 watts, I can feel that temperature going higher than what I want. Um, I generally just rock at a maximum temperature, stainless steel 316, and go with it. Um, I like stainless steel. I used to vape on nickel, titanium, and whatnot, and I'm not going to go too much of a tangent on that, but if I've got the option of doing stainless steel without using a heavy metal, that potentially may, maybe, cause some damage to my body, why not use the stainless steel? And then you have the added benefit of being able to swap out between temp control and power regulated modes without having to change a tank, coil, whatever. Just go back and forth. That being said, because I primarily vape on tobacco juices and usually naturally extracted tobacco juices, I do tend to do temp control, and this thing is very accurate. The mod and this tank together really, really do work very well. I put it at a higher temperature. I don't want the juice to burn and have uh, flavor change out. Um, tobaccos just tend to break down much beyond about 600 degrees, and if you don't do temp control, uh, the juices do get hotter than 600 degrees, especially if you're vaping above 45, 50 watts. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, this thing just really, really puts out vapor. And it puts out a ton of flavor. Um, how does the flavor rate? Is it like an RDA? No. Uh, I mean, really, honestly, the only thing that's like an RDA is an RDA. Even great flavor tanks like the Aroma Miser, the Griffin 25, they don't put out quite RDA flavor. Um, let's rate this against 
those tanks down, the Griffin and the uh, Roma Miser. How does this uh, hold up? And there goes the sun. Just hit behind a cloud. There it comes again. Sorry about that. Anyway, flavor-wise, how does this rate? Um, it's close. Very close. Um, compare this to the sub-tank mini, top-tank mini. No comparison. The, this tank just blows them away. Um, you're not going to get a dripper experience out of this. I mean, I'm of the contention that you're not going to get a dripper experience out of anything other than a dripper. Even these RDTAs like the avocado and whatnot, they're close. They're really close, but not quite. Uh, the dripper experience, you get the flavor, the vapor, and all that. It's generally because you're hypersaturating that wick. And you really can't do that with anything that's tank fed. You're not dripping, you're not bleep, controlling uh, what goes onto that wick, onto the coil, so you really can't hypersaturate it. Uh, that being said, this does give um, a dripper esque experience. I'd say it's about on par with the Griffin 22. Uh, Flavor-wise, uh, vapor-wise, no. Uh, I mean, the the Griffin 22 is a dual uh, velocity deck beast. Uh, the Griffin 25 has better flavor uh, because you can put a crazier, more exotic build in this. That being said, I mean, like I've got a 2632 Clapton in this, and it works perfectly with a three millimeter inner diameter, and it works perfectly fine in this. It fit great. Um, I had to tweak around with it a little bit and play with it to get uh, a vertical orientation. And like any new tank, that's something you're going to have to do. Um, cons. Let's go over those first. One, and I don't know why they didn't do this. No juice flow control. I would like to have seen, even if it was just a single mechanism, the airflow control and juice flow control work together. I'd like to be able to see something shut off in there. Um, a lot of tanks are doing that right now, so you don't have to have two separate rings. That would make this so that it doesn't flood out every time I fill it up. Um, that being said, you didn't see it on camera, but it does do it once in a while, especially if I tighten this thing down pretty quick if I'm in a rush. Juice flow control would get rid of that. That'd be the biggest thing I'd like to see with this tank. Um, what else? And it's kind of just because of the form factor you're choosing. It's got small juice capacity, and it's a particular issue with this because for a single coil RTA, this thing really does drink juice. Um, and you can already see that it's gone through a bit of it. Uh, I had it absolutely full when I started this review. I mean, it was brimmed. And I'm, I've already got a decent air bubble in there. It'll go through fairly quickly. Uh, Really, that's about it. Uh, maybe I would like to have seen a more protruding 510 pin, but really this type of setup isn't made to go on a hybrid mod. It's a single coil setup. Um, not crazy about that drip tip, but that's more of a kind of a matter of taste. <clears throat> I just like these uh, Delrin drip tips. And this one's great for this. They just don't get hot. Um, pros. Oh my god. Flavor. This produces better flavor than the Goblin Mini V2, which is just, it's a flavor chuck and beast. This produces better flavor than the Pico RTA, which is another flavor chuck and beast. For a single coil RTA, this has got it for me. And this has probably the best flavor out of anything, with one exception. Um, the top filled, or top deck bottom tank Corolla RTA has better flavor than this because it's designed for a a less exotic build. It just works a little bit better uh, producing flavor, but that being said, it doesn't have anywhere near the airflow, it doesn't have anywhere near the capacity for an exotic coil. Um, this is right up my alley, and this is great for tobacco vapes. I can go anywhere from a good mouth along to a wide open direct along hit. It uh, Really, really uh, fills all my uh, checkboxes ex except for two. One, I would like to have seen it in black. They're taking care of that. Two, I would like to have seen juice flow control. If they did those things, this would be pretty much nigh perfect for me. As soon as I saw this, I had to pick one up, and I am not disappointed even in the least. Uh, so let's move back to the VTC Mini. Pros and cons. I'm not going to beat this to death. You guys have seen these before. Um, it's a single 18650 device. That's kind of my speed. And it's small. 
I mean, even with my little hands, I can cover it up. I do like that it has a removable battery, uh, so that if I want to carry a spare around, I effectively have 6,000 milliamp hours of battery life throughout the day. Great magnets. I mean, this thing is solid. Good enough uh, 510 pin, um, spring mounted, and I mean, things don't tend to wobble on here. It's got that really sexy screen. I just, I really dig that screen. Simple setup with the three buttons. And you've got your uh, micro USB not on the bottom. That's good. I don't like things on the bottom of mods. I just, meh. It, it doesn't do it for me. Cons. Um, yeah. I got nothing. 75 watts out of a single 18650 of that size. Yeah. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, the Pico, uh, the E-Leaf Pico, or Pico, whatever you want to call it, is a little shorter. It measures about, um, the part with the deck, not with the battery cover, measures out to right about there. So, I mean, it's noticeably shorter. That battery cover comes up to right about there. Um, but it's also noticeably wider, and it would stick out about that far. So it's a little chunkier in the hand. This is about perfect. Um, there's nothing to not like about this. Uh, in my estimation, other than, hey, it's not a dual 18650 device, I can't hit 200 watts with it. Okay, you want one of those, go get a Joytech cuboid, or go buy a Relo and get a uh, Series 3 battery device and just be done with it. For an 18650 single device, or single 18650 device, this is it, though. I mean, for me, this is still about the best option that's out there. Um, I really don't know what else to say about these devices. Uh, they're both of them dead simple. They do what they're designed to do. They do it very well, and they make a really killer combination, and I can't wait for Watofo to release the black version of the Serpent Mini. I'm picking one up. I think it would just look absolutely sick on this. And I'm gonna get one. Not a whole lot else to say. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the view. I hope you found this informational, entertaining, whatever. Um, so yeah, vape on, vape safe, and... I'll see you later. I'll be back for another uh, review here in the next several days. And uh, here in the next week or so, I'm going to be recording a review uh, of how to do your own um, naturally extracted tobaccos. That is to say, take some raw tobacco product, cigar, you know, raw tobacco, leaf pipe tobacco, whatever, and uh, craft your own concentrate out of it. Um, I sent some of my own personal concentrate over to Scott Bonner, I get you 69. He really dug the stuff. Um, he says it gives a great flavor, and coming from another tobacco vapor, uh, I take that as high praise. Uh, he suggested that I record uh, a do-it-yourself video, so cool, I'm going to do that. Um, it's going to be kind of a piecemeal video, but I'll go ahead and get that done and out there. Uh, what else? I've got a few other products that I'm uh, picked up that I want to review. Uh, a couple things I've wanted to give away, and uh, a juice review here and there. Just a few things. So that's going to be up and coming, and, you know, I don't have the resources that some of these other reviewers do, so <clears throat> I don't have as much time and ability to record these videos on a regular basis, so just kind of bear with me on that, and I'll get these uh, reviews out to you. But insofar as this little guy and that little guy are concerned, I don't think you can go wrong with this. I mean, it's just really, really nasty. And this, this thing just... does nothing wrong. So that being said, I'm going to stop rambling and let you carry on with your day. So carry on, YouTube, and vape safe. Thanks for watching. See you later.